Now, the World Food Programme is warning that parts of Gaza are at risk of famine. The United Nations agency says very little food has made it past southern Gaza since the conflict began. Israel claims it has placed no restrictions on aid deliveries, but aid workers are accusing Israeli forces of denying them access to parts of Gaza. The Hamas-run health authority in Gaza says more than 25,000 Palestinians have been killed in the war. And for the very latest on the humanitarian situation in Gaza, we can speak to William Schomburg. He's the head of the sub-delegation for the International Committee of the Red Cross in Gaza, joining us now from Rafa in the southern Gaza Strip. Welcome to DW, Mr Schomburg. Thanks so much for your time. The, the majority of displaced Palestinians in Gaza are now in Rafa. Can you give us a sense of the situation that they are facing right now? Good evening and thank you very much. Uh, the situation in Rafa is alarming. Uh, there are over one and a half million displaced civilians that have moved primarily from the north of the Gaza Strip to the south. Uh, access to healthcare is extremely limited. There are only two functioning hospitals across the Gaza Strip, uh, which are currently proximate to where there are very heavy ongoing hostilities. And that's coupled with the fact that um, with the cold weather, with the rain, civilians are lacking shelter. Uh, there is a very limited access to clean drinking water or food. And the situation is becoming ever more desperate for people that simply do not have the means to cope and survive. You mentioned that only two hospitals in Gaza are now functioning. Is the Red Cross able to provide any help at all to those hospitals? So the ICRC, the International Committee of the Red Cross, has a medical surgical team within the European Gaza Hospital, where we have been treating uh, casualties and specifically the weapon wounded, including burns victims, for several weeks now. We also uh, have been able to provide donations of essential medical items, including medication and other types of consumables, to different hospitals since the hostilities began. However, unfortunately, this is a drop in the ocean of what is required. And um, with all of the difficulties in terms of access to healthcare at present, um, what we are able to provide simply is outstripped uh, enormously by the huge needs that we witness on the ground. Only 66 aid trucks entered Gaza yesterday. As we're hearing, Gazans are now facing famine. From your point of view, what is stopping aid from entering Gaza and getting to the people who need it? I think there's a variety of different considerations that have complicated the entry of vitally needed assistance into the Gaza Strip. Um, some of those are logistical, some of those are political. Um, what we are concerned about is squarely focusing on the humanitarian needs. And I think that sometimes we talk a lot about the numbers of trucks um, and whether or not they are increasing or decreasing. We need a rapid escalation in terms of uh, both the quantity and the variety of items that are able to come into Gaza in order for those needs to be met, which we observe are only increasing. From what you're saying, it's understandable that diseases are now spreading in Gaza, and I wanted to ask you about that. Is there any way right now to contain this spread of diseases that we're seeing there? We are starting to hear alarming reports about the growing prevalence of different types of illness, including diarrhea, as well as the frequency of reported cases of hepatitis A. Um, for the time being, it's obviously very difficult for us to be able to assess that fully. Um, however, as uh, more rain starts to come, and it's, it's rained this evening in Rafa, and more is forecasted for the days ahead, and as the weather gets warmer, of course, that creates an environment in which, with such poor sanitary conditions, the probability of such illnesses uh, growing in prevalence becomes a major risk uh, for the weeks ahead. William Schomburg from the International Committee of the Red Cross. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks for bringing us up to date. Thank you.